Okay, so it's paint time on this bay window camper. Now, as I said in the previous video, this is going in 2K gloss. It's mango green, which is L346, I believe, is the Volkswagen paint code for that. Uh, we've mixed this up on our Capsi scheme, um, and we're going to be using the WS400 OBS Series 2. Um, I thought I'd give this a bit of a bash for this instead of using the WS400 um, for it. Just to see um, the difference and how it performs um, compared to using the WS itself. Um, the WS has been my main clear gun now for quite some time, the WS Series 2. Um, I picked up this OBS once or twice to do a little bit of wet on wet and stuff like that. Now from what I believe, um, the WS400 itself, um, the main clear gun, is obviously your everyday sort of clear gun. Um, and then you've got the LS and you've got the OBS on top of that. So the LS400 would be mainly your everyday manufacturer sort of go-to base coat gun. The OBS has a slightly wetter application, so it's more suited towards, I think it's lines like Stando Blue and that sort of thing that require like one coat and then a half coat, as in base coats, um, like the water-based systems that are pretty much one coat coverage. This is more in line with those. So I thought I'd give it a go with the gloss because at the end of the day, all it's going to do technically is just put it down a little bit wetter, which isn't really a bad thing. Now. I've got this set up to two bar. I've tweaked the fan in a touch just because there's quite a few tight areas on this van, like around the windows and stuff. So I shrunk the fan down a little bit. Um, it means I'm going to do a few more passes on the larger panels, but it means when I get to some of the tighter areas, it's going to make it a little bit easier to get around some of them smaller, tighter areas on the van. Now, in the previous video, I believe... We did the primer work on this, and then all we've done after that is then give this a block out, quickly round with 320 to make sure that everything's looking nice, run it over with a 500, um, put the sealer in there that you can see there's some fresh sealer down that seam, just check everything over and get it then remasked for paint. Now, I'm going to be putting on this first coat quite light, um, so running two bar, I'm probably only running about two and a half, maybe three turns, um, just to put one sort of fully closed but fine coat on there, just to give everything else after it something to grip to. So after this, I end up winding this on full fluid um, and then just absolutely leathering it up. I want a nice build there so that I can give it a good flat and polish. Not that it really needed much of a flat and polish, there wasn't a lot of crap in this when it was done. Um, and it came out relatively flat, but for a job like this, we always give it a polish. So for this first coat, I'm not really worrying too much about finish, so to speak. I'm just going to want to put one nice, even wet coat on, and then the consecutive layers are going to be like two really wet layers over the top that are then going to build us up a nice, smooth gloss and a little bit of film thickness there so that we've got enough to give it a good flat and polish. Plus, down the line, there's plenty of colour on there, so that if anyone wants to give it a buff in the future, or say it gets a, you know, a very minor mark on it, then there's plenty of paint and plenty of material there for somebody to go buffing. So obviously with 2K gloss, when you start buffing it, you'll be taking some of that colour off the van. So an extra coat um, we normally put on them anyway. Or you could do, say, two coats of gloss and one coat of clear if you really wanted to. And you could do those as if you're putting um, just your third coat down. So once you finish your second coat, give it 10, 15 minutes to flash off, clean your gun out, come back in the booth with some clear mixed, and then just shoot one coat of clear straight over the top. Obviously using the Capsi gloss and the Capsi clear together would probably be a good idea because it's probably got a lot of the same chemicals, etc. in it. So you know, you know you're going to get a good bond. But as long as everything's... Within the flash off times, we've never had an issue and we've done plenty like that. So you can see with this Capsi gloss, there is there's no issue as far as like coverage goes. I've not had a poor covering colour um, in their gloss system yet. 
whether it be white, red, anything, it covers up really quickly. Now, theirs is really thick, so this is a 2 to 1 and then a 30% thinners, um, which brings it down to the same sort of viscosity as everybody else's. We're not weakening the colours by doing that, it's just the gloss, the same as the base coat, is very thick to start with, so that extra bit of thinners is very much needed. And then in between coats, I'll give it around about a 10 to 15 minute flash off. Um, this first coat, I'm going to be going across with a nice 50% overlap and then I tighten it up more and more as we go into the consecutive coats just to get it wetter and wetter and obviously up to full fluid but with um, 2k gloss the one thing that you do want to just be a little bit careful of is that if you do get a run then all the pigments in the colours tend to pool up and where the run was, although you can get it flat, you, too, you do sometimes tend to end up with a slightly off patch bit of colour. Now, I just want to say a big thank you to everyone that's subscribed recently. There's been a lot of new subscribers. If you're not subscribed, please do hit the bell for notifications on new uploads. And also hit that subscribe button and leave a comment if you enjoyed the video. So as you can probably tell as we're going around this, this OBS is doing a brilliant job. Um, this has got the 1.3 set up in it. Um, I believe I've got the 1.4 for this as well, but I decided to go for the 1.3. It's tell there on the back corner. It's laying it nice and flat. Um, it's got a nice fan, it's got nice atomization. It feels just as good as the other guns, obviously it's got the same body. But it just atomizes and lays a tiny little bit different. Now I quite enjoyed using this for this van. It felt like it was quite a quick gun, um, especially with me just tweaking the fan in a tiny bit because we've got a lot of small tight areas like this to get in. So a huge fan is going to be a little bit more tricky to keep things quite as accurate. Um, plus we've got to get under like things like these gutter rails. So I've got to be really careful on how I'm angling the gun for starters to make sure that the paint's shooting all the way up there because it's really easy if you're not careful to miss a little bit of those. And also, it's quite easy to get a little bit of edge build-up or runs when you're trying to spray in those tight little gaps where the rubbers go and around these areas here. You know, you want to make sure you've got them fully covered. But at the same time, we don't want to be getting any runs or any build-up where we don't need it. Especially right on the panel edges. Because um, we'll end up with that little bit of a window framing look, which nobody really wants to a panel edge. So I did promise that I'd get this video done last week. Um, unfortunately, I've just been way too busy at the moment, we're really behind at the shop um, so I've been trying to concentrate on getting caught back up at the shop um, I've been doing a lot more hours I worked all weekend um, and I'm probably going to be in all this weekend as well um, at the moment and for the next few weekends to get everything caught up and back on back on target job wise because we've got a few big jobs on at the moment and I'm just running behind on them all uh, with Christmas and a million other things that have been going on, just life getting in the way a little bit. Um, but um, this one, obviously, you'll be watching this on Friday for the regular live. Um, by the time you watch this, the roof and everything will have already been done on this. Um, this was done, I think, the time of editing this been done at least a week, um, if not longer. Um, by the time that you guys actually get to watch this, um, the panels are currently being final prepped ready to throw in the booth and get those done and then we've just got the pop top roof to bodywork after that and a few little things like the bumpers so we're trying to push ahead get the panel work on this finished um, now that the shell's out of the booth for this I'm getting all the caprice panels finished off um, so as soon as I get time to get the next video edited up on those um, I'll get another video popped up on the caprice because you guys seem to very much like the last video on that and we'll take a look at the where we go from the epoxy stage of applying epoxy and where we go from there we've got a few other interesting jobs on in the shop at the moment as well but i think one of which i'm not going to release until i've shot a whole series and edited the whole series so i can upload probably one maybe two a week um in one big shot of the whole series of one of the whole cars just to make things a little bit easier so in the meantime it might be a case of this week it's going to be a video on this bay window camper next week you're probably going to get one on the caprice panels 
um, and then it might shoot back to this camper um, and a few other bits we've got. You know, it's going to be a little bit back and forth, but we'll keep the content coming. Because um, I have got a few edited. Um, well, I've been sort of sat down and chilling at night. I've just stuck my stuck my music on one monitor um, and been editing on the other monitor. But it's just when it's come to the voiceover, I've been it's been late, it's been tired. We've just had new broadband put in at the house, and at the minute it's still flicking on and off like a yo-yo. So it's made uploading a little bit tricky as well. But hopefully, by the time I actually try and upload this, ready for Friday, it might have settled down a bit. Um, but yeah, we're you know we're all right. We're just plodding along. We've just been a little bit busy. I know a few of you guys have been asking where I've been, but. I'm just really busy at the minute, a little bit stressed, but just trying to get caught up on the stuff that we're behind on and get stuff back on track for customers um, and get stuff pushed out. So this is the end of coat number one. Um, we put three coats on this in total. So the first coat's gone down, just a light wet coat. It's just basically something there for the consecutive coats to grip to. Um, and just put that initial layer of colour on and get, try and make sure we can get full coverage in all the areas. So if, say God forbid, we did miss a tiny little bit on the next coat or on the final coat going under one of the rails at, on the roof, then we know it's already 100% fully covered. Um, because, as you can see, there's not really much change here. You know, we're just putting now a little bit of build and adding the gloss. The first coat... I wasn't really paying too much attention on whether it was going to end up with a dry edge anywhere because again it's going to get covered up by a couple more coats but now I'm just going to tweak my gun settings in on this first bit just so that I know I'm getting the right amount down without the risk of it running and we ended up just running it full fluid in the end um, and then I'm going to spend a little bit more time now to keep this wet edge moving so on this edge for an example I'm just pulling this corner in first so that I don't have to try and pull that all the way to the middle and then catch the light ring because that's again a little bit of an awkward spot that if your gun's not quite at the right angle you won't catch it and then I'm going up to the same spot the other side so now I'll take this you know three quarters away around the front panel and then we'll catch the last quarter of the front panel um, at the end now again this performed really well um, I gave this, I'd say, 10, maybe 15 minutes between each coat um, to make sure that it was a really good flash off. Um, it was a very cold week when I painted this, but the booth was still running at a good probably 20, 25 degrees. Um, so stuff was fla still flashing off more than fast enough. Um, but I don't want to crank it up any higher, um, just in case the longer the booth runs, the hotter it can usually get um, as the heat exchanger gets hotter and hotter it reaches its temperature a little bit easier so sometimes we have to knock it up a little bit higher just to keep the temperature but if you're spraying for a long period of time like doing a job like this um, probably spend total for these three coats maybe an hour in the booth um, tops I, I would say not even that actually and what's this video this video is like 20 25 minutes long you probably spend 45 minutes tops in the booth to put three coats on a full van. Um, and this is one thing that, you know, a lot of people don't realise, like, this thing's had, God, weeks and weeks and weeks of work and bodywork and blocking and prep um, to spend 45 minutes in the booth being painted. It literally takes a couple of hours to mask it um, and get it all cleaned down and get everything right just literally to pick up a gun and walk in for 45 minutes to put the colour on. It's the most enjoyable stage, I find. It's the bit that I most like. Um, because as soon as you start covering up like the shell with this colour, you really start to see all your hard work and the work that you've put into it just start gleaming through all of a sudden. Um, all the straightness, you know, the flatness of the panels, all those nice rounded edges, you know, everything just sort of, as soon as the colour starts hitting, starts falling into place. I think they look great in primer, um, when they're ready for paint and everything's all masked and sorted, but there's nothing better than when that gloss hits it, and everything sort of, the van just kind of takes shape before your eyes. It's it's a good feeling. It gives you a good sort of sense of accomplishment that finally, you know, we've got to this stage, because 
those weeks and weeks and weeks of blocking um sometimes you can get issues with stuff so you might have some old paint that you've had to battle with along the way so you might have uh, areas that you've had to bare metal that you didn't expect in the first place it might have taken longer on the body work than you first expected um so you spent a couple of weeks maybe a month you know rattling around one of these big vans to try and body work it and get it as flat and try and tweak these edges as clean as possible for the customer and then to see this going down um, so quickly it just you know within an hour somebody could walk past your shop and come back an hour later and it will just look like a completely different vehicle it's quite crazy but it's kind of like one of the aspects that a lot of people don't see um, on stuff just how much work it takes um, I've been doing the Caprice panels um, last week and I just finished off the last few bits this week on all the panel work for that. And they're not particularly massive doors. They're not particularly very badly bent either, but they've got quite flat, quite long, flat panels, and they're like almost perfectly flat panels. So once you run the block over them, it's amazing now that they've been bare metaled just how many issues it looks like there is underneath all the paint that we ripped off. And I mean, on that one, originally we weren't going to pull the paint off. We tried sanding it down. We could not get it to sand because it was something like old cellulose or something. So the choice was made to bare metal it. Um, and then once you bare metal it, you could unleash like a rat's nest underneath it. Um, I'm glad we did because not only was it tough to sand down, but when we ripped back the bare metal, there was almost like a little, little bit of surface rusting underneath the old paint, but on the metal itself, like right under the first layer. So it's a good call that we did, because um, it's something that we might not have otherwise noticed and we might have done everything and then it could have bubbled up a while later. Um, but luckily, um, because the paint was being so stubborn to sand down um, and we noticed a few little areas that looked a bit iffy, so we decided to bare metal it. It adds a little bit of time, but the end result's going to end up with a much nicer, longer lasting paint job at the end of it, um, which... For us it's better and also for the customer it's miles better as well. But like each one of them panels has probably had like a day, a day and a half just body working. Um, a few little metal repairs on one or two of them where we've had to weld plates in. Just little bits and bobs and it only looks like little stuff. But sometimes it can be quite tricky and take up a lot of time. And for me, that's kind of like, oh, that's like that's the main prep. That's the hard work that goes into one. Um, before we get to this stage um, and like I say that it's kind of hard work sometimes to spend weeks and weeks and weeks um, blocking and repriming or like we've got a couple in at the moment the Caprice is going to get super build um, on that so it's already been epoxied blocked all the repair work has been done then we're going to super build it block it again then it's going to get primer after that if everything looks straight and then obviously we're going to block it again, DA it, and then into paint. So it's, you know, every panel's probably been blocked like four or five times by the time it's been finished. It's crazy to think about just how many times when we're prepping stuff, um, like a big job like this, how many times we must go over the same area um, at a different stage during the process. And even when this is done, we'll go over the whole van again now with a wet flat and polish it. Um, it's quite... You know, when you think about how many hours you put into them, it's quite crazy, really. But, like I said, the final result um, is the main goal. You know, the final result does give you a, a massive sense of sort of job satisfaction. Um, this came in a variety of colours, um, different panels in different states. It's had some new sections welded in, um, some of it's the old metal. Um, there was a little bit of warping on one or two of the side panels where it's had a repair panel so like there's little bits there that needed tweaking out um, where the couple that own it have done the work to it they've like sprayed different bits in different colours just to sort of seal it up um, and seal everything off to stop anything flash rusting etc um, so it was like kind of a multicoloured um, mix of things when it came in so to put the top coat on on this day after spending weeks and weeks and weeks getting it body worked and to see it on all one colour and it all nice and smooth and all nice and glossy 
you know, it's it's a nice feeling. Um, until you realise that you then got to do that to all the panels and all, everything else. Um, but what we normally do is get try and get everything to pretty much a body worked and prime stage um, for a job, and then we'll paint the shell, finish and um, so the shell is done like this is now. And then we'll paint the panels so the panels can be directly bolted straight back on um, to save them knocking around and getting damaged. And then we'll flatten polish uh, the main shell and then just do the, like the last little bit. So like the pop top, the grills, you know, any last little odds and ends that bolt on after, um, we'll do them last thing. So I know I've probably waffled a little bit in this one. Um, some of you guys may still be here at 20 minutes in. Some of you may have gone quite a long time ago. Um, and if you have, you won't know that I've said that. <laughs> but if you are and you do enjoy the videos and you're still here and you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button because there's still so many people that aren't subscribed um, to the channel. It's still quite a high percentage of you guys watch the videos but aren't subscribed. And it's free. Just hit the subscribe button, hit the bell for, to be notified of new uploads. So whenever we put a new series up, or whenever we put a tips and tricks video up or a review or anything like that, you're gonna get a notification um, before it goes live. So you could be here with us on the live chat as well. Um, when we do the lives, we tend to get a good bunch of lads um, in the live chats, which is always nice, and a regular group of guys in the and girls in there as well. So this is gonna be it for this week's video, guys. I hope you have enjoyed the video, and I will see you soon for the next one. Bye for now. It's the calm before the storm. Things aren't as they were before. You best start bracing. Did you think you could keep us out? Shut the gates, forget us now. Tides are changing. Us now, we're not back in town. Know what we're doing? Things don't bother to change. It's evolution. Once you shake the ground, you feel it moving. We have the revolution. Can you hear the sound? Beneath your feet, with a whisper in the tree.